Welcome back guys to another episode. On this episode I'm just going to show you around on a few things that I've done. Alright, so here we have the ECU at the back. It's nicely bolted in there. It's got two bolts in it and they have been rib nutted, rib -nutted to the firewall. Same with this guy. This is for the uh, throttle relaxer and he as well has just got two bolts at the bottom that's been rib nutted. Here we have the coolant overflow and also where you fill the tank. And we just currently have the temporary air box in here um, just so it had a filter on it. I actually chopped the whole bottom of this off. Don't know if you can see, but I chopped the whole bottom off so it's just the filter underneath. Um, it was just so I could drive it, or try to drive it. Um, and it eventually will get a snorkel. I've actually purchased it and it's going to be through the bonnet. So hopefully I can make it clear because it's going to come in that side where the the ECU is, so hopefully it'll clear that. I'm not too sure if it's going to. I don't really want to move it because I can't actually move this guy to the left anymore. As you can see back there, there's two, well they're duct taped off right now, but that's the aircon stuff coming out of the firewall. So hopefully we can get it to fit in here. Don't know what we're gonna do about this guy. He might have to be moved to the front and then an air box put back here where he is. Um, what else? So I got the radiator, all the fans in and everything. Just got an issue with some wiring over here. Um, the light was staying on when this this uh, this high beam was always on, uh, which was a bit of an issue. But I figured out what that was. Um, what else? Got the battery in here. Over here we still just have everything kind of placed in for now, so that's the actual cruise control which hopefully I can get to work. Um, the, I think the only issue with that is the brake, uh, the sensor, um, to tell you if you're braking, because if you brake it turns off the cruise control. Um, it, currently it's an open circuit so it will never turn this on because it thinks you're braking at all times. So I'm going to have to find which wires they are, which I already cut out of the harness, but anyway. Um, let me just have all these connectors still just sitting around here. Um, finish the brakes, so they're all bled and everything. All nice, no issues so far, nothing leaking yet. Let's hope that is uh, still the case. Uh, one thing that I forgot to mention, which I actually kind of messed up, the, to fill the heater, before I had it just these two hoses, the top one and the bottom one going into the motor, and then I had the two over here, which is for the heater core, they were just coming out of the pump down there and going straight up into the heater core. And that does not allow you to put that coolant overflow tank in because down here is a pipe, I think you can see it down there, and it crosses under and it comes up over here. And if you could see this T right here, so that's where the pipe comes in from that reservoir over there and then it tees into this pump and also to the uh, heater core. So that's how you actually fill it. And then we have here the line for the, uh, what is it? The steam port, that's the steam port. Normally I think it goes into the throttle body. I think it goes into the throttle body. I think it goes in on this side in factory and that comes out this front fitting down here. But I got rid of that. It's just a one just a crossover and then it has an outlet on this side. And so he just runs in to the top where it normally would run. And then this is the overflow back to the bottle. And then this is the actual overflow when it goes over pressure. And so yeah, that's how I can fill the system now. That was an issue that I had. And then inside the car, so we've got a lot of wiring around here. We've got all the aircon stuff back in. Down here will be the fuse box and the body control module for the Commodore stuff. Uh, it's, it still needs to be tucked away. There is a vent that goes over the steering column right here. So it can't really be tucked up in that area. There's also all stuff that goes over the top of the steering column, including the cluster needs to fit there. Um, all the wiring over here is the factory uh, patrol stuff. And what I did is, if I can move some stuff, yeah, I can stay there. So this connector here is the uh, the run position, the uh, accessories, and I think this bigger one's the power. And then this connector, this is all the patrol stuff. 
So you have like AC, so it knows when the AC is on. You got high beams, uh, reverse, handbrake, um, illumination. So your cluster turns on when you turn your factory patrol dial. We also have left indicator, right indicator. Yeah, I think that might be about it. There might be one in there that I can't see. Oh, and reverse lights. So when we put the uh, it into reverse, it'll actually tell the car to go into reverse. And then if we find the Commodore harness, which is right here. So it obviously has the, the other end of it with all the other cables. And then it has, that's the cluster connector. Can't be too far. Is this it? Yeah. And then over here, we have the connector that goes into the actual um, the key barrel. So I did use all the wiring from the Commodore into the key barrel because it was a lot thicker gauge. And then it just all tees off into this connector. And then that connector plugs into the factory patrol harness to give it all its um, accessories and run position and stuff. Because uh, these wires are pretty skinny compared. Like this big one here is basically what all the other ones are whereas this one has two smaller ones. So we just decided to use that one into the key barrel and that works pretty well. As you can see, here's the shifter. Shifts into all gears fairly nicely to park. Still got the transfer case over here and this has all got the rubber. If I can show you it. It's got the rubber under there, which the shifter just goes through. It's not very nice in there. Works. It seals it up a bit better. Forgot to mention one other thing down here. I'm pretty sure I showed it. That um, connector down there goes into the car, which I put a hole into the actual to the firewall, and then and then it comes out underneath there, and then it goes up and over the actual heater boxes. Uh, that's the aircon box, so it's not actually going to get hot. And then these are just currently dangling here. Uh, so they won't actually be in that big piece. It's just there for now. But yeah, so that will just be tucked up under the dash and you won't ever see it. Hopefully pretty high up. That's why I went over the top so I can get it as high up. So now we're under the car and that's the exhaust that I bought from Mark's adapters that comes back here and stops there. And then I put a resonator, it's a three inch resonator in, which then goes down to the patrol's really, really small exhaust. Um, so it's actually pretty quiet, which is good. So for engineering, we won't have an issue. Um, but then, because the adapter kit, the, sh the transfer case shift linkage um, doesn't actually fit. And I can get a shot of it. So as you can see, that's like a heim joint end up there. It's just a hollow end with a bolt going through it that allows it to swivel. And then that shaft going down goes down to it, the other one that goes to the actual transfer case. So that's the shifter up the top there, transfer case down the bottom. The issue was is you have to actually extend it, but they give you a steel piece to extend it with and the rod is aluminium. It's also a solid aluminium rod. Uh, so I couldn't actually weld it. So I just bought some, that's just some rod in there with thread the whole way. And then two lock nuts at the top and bottom. And yeah, that actually shifts it really nicely. So if you do have to, if you break one or you know, need to extend it. They were like 20 bucks on eBay, those two ends, and it works really nice. And it's a, you can adjust it as much as you want. Nice new looking line is the power steering line. And uh, down the bottom there, that join is where it goes from the factory Commodore, which is that pipe. That's the factory Commodore line, which goes into one that I got made up. It comes up, ah, hands are stuck. Uh, you probably won't be able to see it very well. Just down there, that bolt you can see, that's the steering pump, uh, the steering box, and that's where that line goes in. So it just comes up the side of the rail here and goes into that, goes into that little box down there. Uh, so I just got that one made, and then the rest of it is just the factory patrol, which does the little loop that goes over to the right side. I don't know if you can see it down there really hard to get down there's just so much stuff up here but it loops goes to the right loops back comes back over to the left here and then the factory uh, Commodore LS one then 
goes from a, like a rubble line into that and then goes all the way back and then comes up and enters into the reservoir up here. So just had to get that one line made. Wasn't too expensive, but yeah, so the power steering should work nicely. So as you can see guys, put a bit more of the interior back in. It's all just pretty boring, just a few screws. It's not all in, half of the bolts are still missing and everything, just in case I have to take some stuff out. Still a little bit of wiring behind the dash that I need to wrap and uh, make sure it still works. Uh, mainly for the lights and reverse lights and stuff um, But yeah apart from that she's getting there. So the next video is going to be the first test drive We're probably going to go take it to Menai and have some fun with it So if you enjoyed it hit that like button and subscribe until next time. See ya